the only good thing I can do for this show is scream wah. But I won't do that to you. Instead, on this Square Bay show, we're going to talk about the nomadic wars, the troll war, as we are going to be going through the Arcane Journal for the Orcs and Goblins. Welcome to Square Based. Mr. Val Helfelfinger in the house. You welcome to Square, Square Based, Rob. You welcome to Square Base. Merci beaucoup. It's super exciting uh, because not only do I have maybe one of the world's biggest Orcs and Goblins fans, one of the most practiced Orcs and Goblins players in the world, Mr. Val Helfelfinger, uh, we, we also have loads of new ways to play one of the most exciting and dynamic armies in the game. So right up there with Beastmen as having just multiple ways to play. This is a hot tome coming in hot. I know we're a little bit yeah. late for this, which is a bit of a shame, but we're here right on and time, we're Rob. ready. We're here and we're ready. When we're here, it's time. That's 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 how it goes, bud. Um, no, I'm I'm really really excited for this. Um, <clears throat> I think the things you said are wild overstatements. Um, I'm already feeling out of practice, having not played for two weeks. But played a, played a game actually with the Nomads last night. We could touch on it at some point if you like. Um, but um, it's it's a definitely a completely different way to play. I felt like I was playing my first game of Old World, to be quite frank. Uh, like it was uh, like all the like. You know the core rules that you're using are, are are changed up. It felt like an entirely different army, which is could that be? Could we hope for anything more than that? Like that's that's perfect. Like uh, um, you know, this is it, like the the Arcane Journal. After you know, I played a lot of games with my with my um, my Grand Army version of Orcs and Goblins, and now I don't want to leave my 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 Orc and Goblin tribes, my homies, because I feel like there's so many cool things we can do now. I agree. I think the fact that like these addendums, these add-ons, and obviously we've already done the big Orc and Goblin deep dive already. If you want to go back and watch that, if you're new to the show, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to everyone on the Square. We're really Patreon. proud of it. It's a, I think it's a good, it's a good chat. It's I a think good it's deep worth, dive. Worth, and we got all yeah. the other deep dives to, to go. So lots of deep dives. Robert, is this a, is this a deep dive? Ah! It's a deep dive. Ah! How could I forget? It's all of those things. So there's literally. We we barely we barely have even started to build our billionaire submarine to take us to the deepest depths of the old world. Uh, but I'm sure when we get to the bottom, everything will be fine. That's what I've learned from billionaire submarines that they're fine. Hey, look, as long as you're not a, a complete dumbass billionaire and you're James Cameron, you are going to be fine. Uh, but it, there are other versions of billionaires who are they're not fine. <laughs> That's true. It's true. All right, so uh, we are uh, going to get dive straight into this, which is super fun. And uh, first up, we're going to look at the Orc and Goblin Nomadic War. And the first thing this does is this obviously changes up your army composition, uh, which uh -huh. is pretty fun. Uh, so I'll just run through this real quick. We've got in the character section one Black Hawk War Boss or Black Hawk Big Boss per Black Hawk Boar Chariot, and then mm -hmm. Orc War Boss or Word Knob per thousand points, and then. Multiple orc big bosses, orc weird knobs, goblin bosses, and goblin shamans, which is kind yes, of sir. fun. Uh, and then core, uh, you can have goblin wolf riders, uh, multiple goblin wolf rider mobs, and goblin wolf chariots. Uh, if your general is an orc boss, you can have a ball boy mob be taken as core, which I think is great. And if your general mm -hmm. is a black orc, uh, you can have a black orc chariot taken as core as well, which I think is hot to trot. Uh -huh. Special, your orc boy mobs, orc boy chariots, snotling pump wagons, rare black orc chariots, and giants. So much more restricted in those two sections. And mercenaries, you can have the Badlands Ogre Balls and the Bone Grinder Giant. So hey straight, straight off the bat, obviously a little a lot more restricted list. How do you feel about this? And that, so that's I think when, when we're talking about uh, arcane journals and what they do to grand armies, I think that number one that's number one in actually making it a different army is that there are some real restrictions. Economy of choice here, right? So like you can't just take a bunch of goblin fanatics in in night goblin units in this nomadic wa it's not it's not what it's about this is a mounted cavalry list so you actually lose a ton of options from the army very restricted unit selection yet it still feels like there's a ton of choices um to to make to sort of take different uh versions of the nomadic wa um so um and that also comes right down to like my my first challenge in list building which i didn't quite get until i was past the point of no return and had to commit uh because we had to play the game um is uh you know what is your what is your war boss going to be um because uh or sorry what's your general going to be uh because um obviously you're thinking uh, maybe you want that 
um, you know, the, the, we're going to talk about the uh, the Black Orc Chariot. You can take your your Black Orc Big Boss or War Boss on the Black Orc Chariot, which is so rad. Um, however, they both can't be the general and the stand. Like, they can't be the general and the standard bearer, uh, which I don't know puts you into sort of choice mode. Um, and also, it kind of taking the the Black Orc um, uh, as as the general means that now you got to spend more on your core on things like wolf riders or wolf or, or wolf chariots. Um, so you, you have less efficient core. Whereas if you could just take a big old chunk of boar boys, your core is covered a lot more easily if you took the war boss. So anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it was a lot of fun and, uh, and I can't wait to take a, a second edit on, on trying to make a list out of this stuff. Well, it's fun. I think, I think we should definitely look at the, the rules you're going to get in these nomadic wars, because I think, uh, these are going to really, they're not necessarily change up, uh, they're going to change up the way you play, right? Which I think is great. Right, okay. So first yeah. up is you get Cunning Hunters. With the Nomadic War Army, any number of Goblin Wolf Rider mobs may, be the ambush, may have the Ambush Special Rule at a cost of plus one point per model. In addition, Goblin Bosses and Goblin Shamans that are mounted on Giant Wolf have the Ambush Special Rule at the cost of plus 10 points per model. Already a stunning option here, in my personal opinion. How do you feel about this? So I think I feel like it seems super fun. I think a lot of people are like, Ambushers kind of sucks. But we're going to meet a new character, a special character, if you will, later on in the show, named Kicknick, who's going to help you with uh, making those uh, Ambusher rolls. Uh, so maybe making Cunning Hunters something uh, a little more um, usable on the table. Um, and um, yeah, I think, I don't know, I'm, I'm a... I'm a I'm a, I'm a fan of the idea of ambushers. I'm yet to actually get out and try and use it. So, um, yeah. I think the thing think that really really fun. is attractive to me, because you've got to remember there's a couple of things we're going to be analyzing these along the, the lines we're going to be analyzing these at. You've got, are they going to work in like an event space that you're going to try and take them to a tournament and win with? And can you do some crazy shit? Those are the two different metrics we want to judge these by. And immediately, Goblin Shamans on Wolves in ambush right i love that you probably don't need that you probably don't need that but i do like getting out of the light out of the arc so my opponent can't just dis- like can't attempt to dispel then i just start yeeting is, spells nope. at them that's fun is it reliable no it could it be nope. great that's the point that's what we're here and for look, fun and adventure also, let's not discount being an agent of chaos in a tournament just just bring in the uh, the list of all the all the that does all the the fun things uh that you know, every now and again, it all comes together for you. That is the demon I'm always fighting uh, uh, when I'm when I'm building lists. Is I love just cool mechanics and tricks and and like things that don't work all the time. So for me, I, I guess I poo pooed ambushers off the top, Rob, because I have to fight my uh, my my greater instincts to rely on unreliable mechanics, including magic. I love I always over invest in things like magic. So yeah, ambushers. I think. Just a, I mean, come on. The, the 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 name of the USR says it all, Rob. They're ambushers. Immediately, what are you thinking of? You're thinking of some friggin' wolves, maybe down on their bellies and some shrubbery, looking around, getting ready to go, and then they pounce. I mean, that's pretty badass. And then they're goblins on. Especially humans, especially but. especially with the new rules, right? Like if you put the goblin wolf riders and put a shaman on a giant wolf in that unit. Um, now they're going to have the reserve move as well. Ambush and reserve move potentially could be something you could try and achieve. Main flight, main yeah. flight. Yep. Lots so of cool stuff. You could do some really fun stuff. Uh, hit them fast and hit them hard is the next rule. This with is a nomadic one. war big army, one. any orc model that is mounted on a war boar, black orc bosses, orc bosses, orc shamans, and orc boar boys. Again, the impact hits one special rule. These impact hits were made using the strength of the characteristic of the war boar and have an armor piercing characteristic of one. In addition, up to one orc boy boys mob per 1000 points may have the vanguard special rule for one point per model so in case you weren't uh, you don't know what vanguard is it lets you make a move at the beginning of the game before the game starts which is pretty nice bro this again i have no idea like i to me this immediately says you're taking two units of of boar boys um and then i don't know how big they should be i don't know i <laughs> i don't know what you do with them once they're on the table but Man, does that seem good? That is, I'm pretty sure, um, stacking with um, uh, oh, Tusker Charge is different. So yeah. So anyway, these impact hits are phenomenal. Impact hits are probably superior to stomps because they happen before everything. 
Um, and um, they just add just so much to this unit, especially, you know, if you're getting countercharged, they're still getting their licks in, reducing the fighting strength of the enemy before they can swing on your boar boys. Um, man, I, I, I don't know. Hit them fast and hit them hard. If, if there was a, a, a really strong rule that this, that this, uh, that this um, army of infamy gives you, um, oh, I'm so sorry. Army, army of, of infamy. infamy gives you, um, it's, I think, hit him fast and hard. <clears throat> yeah, so if anyone out there isn't quite sure, one of the things, obviously, to remember is that most units have an attack. And if you to get an extra attack via something like Frenzy, then, obviously, you have this massive detriment that Frenzy also brings as well. So mm -hmm. being able to give what is effectively a faux extra auto-hitting attack, because that's yeah. what the impact hit is, is actually an incredible change, because you don't need to give them Vanguard, which means, effectively, this is a free upgrade for those boar boys, yes. making them tw almost twice as good straight off the well, bat for no points upgrade is really, really strong. And think think of it this way too. If it's an auto hitting attack, that's really two attacks because most of the time you're hitting somewhere around a four up, right? Like you're not you're not like boar boys aren't aren't hitting better than a three anyway. So really, that's like two attacks. Um, so like this is a massive uh, uh, lift to their damage output. Um, the only thing with 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 uh, impact hits uh, to be considered uh, would be that. Um, you know, even if you have a wide fighting rank, uh, they only affect things in base to base. I'm pretty sure. I might be speaking out of turn. Yeah, there. they are I base to base if it impact hits. But it, so, well, a good thing is, is you obviously get um, a really positive thing is that you get an extra impact hit for each one in your unit as well. So, like, you know, if you're six wide, that's potentially six impact hits, which is pretty yeah. massive. If you can get them all, if if you can get them all to bear, yeah, for sure. Mm. Mm. I mean, I think units generally are trending towards slightly wider. So obviously not that impactful into a monster, but then it's not particularly strong hit into a monster, you know. Uh, but yeah. there we go. Um, Just saying. Yeah, that's good. Honey it's packs. very good. Yeah, any goblin wolf rider mob with a nomadic war army may exchange open order and skirmish special rule for close order and horde special rule. Let me tell you, this is rubbish. I don't know if it is. Again, Kicknick is Kicknick is the thing that that makes this a little more interesting um, because essentially what this gives you is a unit uh, like a block unit of inf like basically your block unit of infantry, right? That's what it's replacing, mm -hmm. um, and um, it could it also buffs your leadership too if your if your general is because uh, um, I believe Wolf Riders are warband, um, so like it does give you that extra rank. Um, so I wouldn't throw this one. I wouldn't throw this baby out in the in the bat with the bathwater just yet. Um, but maybe my smooth brain is just trying to make this a wrinkly brain uh, piece. But yeah, I think I think with Kicknick, I'd love to run a big unit of close order. But we'll see. Okay. Well, it, th there is two different opinions on that one. On the move. Yeah, hell yeah. All characters with a nomadic war must be mounted. So no no fellas on a Beautiful. foot. You've all got to have got a wheel or a haunts underneath it, or a wolf, or a chariot, or or really long legs. Yeah, you got to work really hard. Really giants, hard. giants are allowed. Yeah, which I think is cool. Like legit, I think that's yeah. a, like it's a very cool rule. I, the formatting it freaks me out. I don't know why that's not the first rule in, in on the list. <laughs> I'm like, put that there. Like, even put that on the. But whatever. And then solitary fighters, black hawk bosses with a nomadic war army are not subject to the boys or. Quell animosity special rule. Yikes. So so yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of impetuousness in Nomadic Wa. Um, although Nomadic Wa is gonna give orcs and goblins an amazing tool in their in their uh in, in their items to deal with impetuous impetuousness. I think anyone who watched um the uh the, the deep dive on uh, on the the uh, the grand army will know that I'm I'm a impetuous impetuousness um, avoider. I haven't I haven't embraced my impetuosity uh, as an orc player. Um, so uh, so yeah, I think I think not being able to quell it is okay in this because it's also a, a real aggro list. I think at at face value, we're gonna find out what how it plays the best. But at face value, you're you're, you're mixing it up, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, but not having the Du Bois special rule is particularly awesome because that means that you're not needing to take one to one um, everything. Like uh, you, you're not having a pair. You can take Black Orc chariots. Um, I'm pretty sure, and uh, in your rare slot, and not have to worry about having Black Orc characters, which is cool. 
Yeah. Or you can take your Black Orc character and not have to worry about uh, Black Orc chariots. And they themselves are not impetuous. Um, so you, if you just take, you know, your Black Orc um, character, you can still take them on a Wyvern if you wanted. Um, they're, um, you know, they're not suddenly impetuous, which is cool. Sweet. Uh, okay, so uh, the next uh, thing we should look at, I think, before we go and look at the other stuff, is look at some of the characters. And Kicknick, Tooth Snatcher, as we've talked about, um, is here. So he's a light cavalry fella uh, with, mm -hmm. that's worth only 105 points and is a toughness four goblin with three wounds of all those things. Uh, comes with shield light armor, a cavalry spear, and has obviously got I a just bunch wanna, of <laughs> As we're reading this, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna fray, I wanna see if you, if you feel the same. But this guy gives me shades of Teto Echo. Okay. Um, and the reason I say that is because back in the day, well, back in the day, like a few months ago, when I was still playing Eighth Edition Fantasy, I love playing my Lizard Men, and I know this is probably still a sore point, sore point for Rob, but uh, because we forgot to put Teto Echo into his list when he played in Square Base GT, um, but. Teto Echo was a was a was like basically a skink priest that kind of worked like a slan, and he was cheap, and he had a billion special rules. Like he had so many special rules that like you looked at his his unit card, and I would always think like, why wouldn't you take this guy? But I think the problem with Teto Echo was is that taking him kind of changed where you were coming from with the list. So even though he was very cheap, and you wanted to always have him, you it, you then were kind of forced to make other decisions. Uh, to build your list around him, and Rob had really good reasons to use Tato Echo. I rarely did, but I always shoehorned him in there. I feel the same pull with Kicknick. Kicknick, Kicknick we're going to see here, has so many cool rules, and he gives so many like neat little boosts for 105 points. And he's not a chump; like he's not like 105 points for this character ain't bad. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thing. I just think he's a really interesting style special character. He's not like super overpowered, but he does add a lot and it's just up to us as players to figure out can you make something out of it well let's see what he does and then we can uh we can see if that all holds up uh all sneaky yeah. all sneaky like we'll talk about that first because obviously like i think let's talk about the special rules then we can work backwards uh Heck yeah he's got zero to one goblin wolf rider mobs in the same muster list as kicknick have the ambush a special rule for free which is nice. Right. In addition, you may apply plus one uh, or minus one modifier to result when rolling to determine if a Goblin Wolf Rider mob with the ambush to special rule that is currently held in reserve arrives this turn as reinforcements or is delayed. So if you were looking to do, obviously, that ambush, I like the, the fact that you can plus one and minus one this, so it's a control yes. as a threat. Great call out. That's, that's yep. quite fun, obviously. Um, and like we said already, if you wanted to do uh, a weird little caster, uh, like sneaking. I love that idea. I think that's really fun. Now it's a three up. That's quite cool. Uh, or if you were really trying to just threaten someone's back line and make them shift, you have to remember as always, uh, the old world is a game of, are you moving forward? Uh, and if, you, cause you need to, uh, or because your opponent's making you need to. And if you're not, um, then, you know, is something coming from behind trying to protect from all fronts at once is quite challenging. And this is quite mm -hmm. fun. I think ambush is better than people give it credit for, but I can see why people feel disappointed by it. I think it's, it's the, for me, it's, they made it a four up. You know what I mean? Like the four up that 50, 50, it's not hard to blow a four up a number of times in a row. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's also easy to roll for it, but like, you know, like, you could easily be turn three before your ambushers come in, um, or worse. Uh, they do automatically come in turn five, I believe. So, like they they do get there eventually. Um, but by that by that token, because I like you called out, this guy lets you actually reduce that rule. Um, so, if say you want to do points denial and you had a, a big big a, a good amount of points sort of hidden away, um, maybe Kicknick is is useful in that in that regard. Um, I don't know. I think I think it'd be fun to see what people can do with it, right? Or and I think and that includes myself. I, I do want to see how we can use Kicknick to play around with ambush. I think this would be very cool. Very fun in my personal opinion. I think this would be really good. Uh, so Kicknick has also got it and run as well. Uh, should they win a round of combat, Kicknick and any Goblin Wolf Rider mob he has joined may choose to fall back in good order rather than making a follow-up or pursuit move, which is huge. Uh, absolutely huge mobility on the tabletop, being able to like, you know, potentially ambush, charge in, hit a thing, give themselves space. Because, you know, a close order Wolf Rider mob would be fairly broad and a little bit unwieldy. Uh, so you could mm -hmm. protect, like that gives you a lot of space, which I think is really fun. That's a nice 
bit of design space they've worked in there with now we've got units that are going to hit and pull back. I think yeah. that's super cool. Really fun. Of course, the the one challenge here is you got to win the round of combat, um, but it does allow you to disengage. And again, this is where that open order thing maybe um, gets interesting because you can build um, your, or you can try to build your um, your big brick of of wolf riders to have a lot of static combat res. So you can give them um, bonuses um, uh, to 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 combat res by having. Um, uh, I guess you get two extra ranks. Uh, because they're in their horde, because they gain the, gain the horde special rule. You can add banners to give positive combat res. You give these guys the red raggedy flag, which is a great orc 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 item uh, that gives them plus one combat res and plus one weapon skill, which is important for Gabos. So there's a chance that you could maybe find a way to get them uh, in a place where they don't have to do a tremendous amount of damage and win combat. And of course, because they're so mobile, hopefully you're picking uh, your combats well too. Um, you have a chance to dictate what they're actually going into, and they can win and use some of their, you know, flexibility. Or maybe you pin them down and then hit them with a chariot, and then you you get out of dodge. I don't know. Uh, again, it just opens up that cool creative play space to make something happen with this rule. And I think they're the only one of the only units I, that I know of that can leave combat now that the FAQ says you can't. It's very cool. It's, it's it's incredibly yeah. cool. You can do some really fun stuff with that, and I think that's why uh, I think this is would be again. I think this is such an exciting. When we talk about troll the troll war, I think that's good. Don't get me wrong, but I think this is this is the army very much like when I did the Beastman review. I was like, these are the armies that I think players are going to have a real good time with. Uh, as the player, the opponents just sweating bullets, not sure where units are coming in, what they're going to do next. Um, to, and to be clear, tro troll horde is the army I should play. Very straightforward, very clear what's powerful, move very straightforward. Uh, this is the army I want to play, which is always dangerous. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it should be fun, though. It should be really, really fun. Yeah. During a turn, uh, so to boss's trophy right during a turn in which they charge, kick Nick and any goblin wolf or riders uh, that he joined cause fear, which is nice, means they're not subject to terror. And oh, on the turn they charge, yeah, and receive a bonus of plus one combat result, which, you know, stick them in closed order because you can do that. Um, and mm -hmm. then potentially you got yourself a bunch of combat resolution, which is quite nice because they're, they're unlikely to be doing the damage in combat. Um, yeah. But that's fun. I wouldn't really personally do that myself, I, but I think that's a nice addition. Off, off the top of my head, I mean, you can really easily get this unit up to five static combat res. And so, like, that's that ain't bad. You give them, and, and then, yeah, it, it ain't bad. It's something. Again, I don't know if it's good, but it's something. Yeah, I agree. I think it's good. Uh, and he's also got a special weapon uh, that he can choose two profiles. Uh, strength plus two, minus one, armor being magical attacks, or strength minus two, armor being two magical attacks, and Morty Wounds too, which is super nice to have on a, a character, Morty Wounds too. In addition to that, he obviously has the ambushers uh, keyword armor bane on his chomper only, uh, which is the mount he's on. Uh, armored hide, so he's got a four up armor safe base. Uh, chariot runners, which is nice. Fast cavalry, uh, fear of elves, impetuous, it and run, rallying cry, swift stride, and warband. Rallying cry is quite nice to have in the army as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's a nice little bonus. And then, yeah, warband. So he can obviously get some pretty high leadership on his already base leadership eight. Yeah. Not bad. So, not bad. He's not bad. He's not 105 bad. points. Why wouldn't you like him? I don't know. Like, yeah, I think, yeah, if you want to run a bunch of wolf riders, I think that's fun. Uh, absolutely. Obviously, you know, the orc boys get such an upgrade in the output, but this you could do some really fun dynamic stuff with this, which I think the Orcs and Goblins book has a lot of options for a dynamic play, which I think is really yeah. good. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Super good. I think he's great. What are you going to rate him out of 10? Give me a rating out of 10. Um, I, I'm giving. <clears throat> What I'm just gonna say eight. I just think he's cool. I don't know if in the fullness of time he he becomes something that you can really hang your hat on, but I want to try. So that gives. So my my gut take is is I really want to use them. So take that as you may. Internet doesn't mean it's a good idea, but I really want to use them. And also, I really want to make a kick, Nick. I think I think he's he'll be fun to get bash out of avatars at war stuff. So um, th other than we got magic items and stuff to look at, but I think it's fair to say at this point we could just do a quick, like, what do we think of the uh, the nomadic war? And I would say that um, a dynamic army I, already... Go, yeah, go for it. Oh, I, I really hate to cut you off, brother, but one thing we didn't 
touch on ever uh, in our deep dive was Boar Boys. We actually didn't actually talk about the Boar Boy unit card, and because they're so integral to this, can we maybe just talk them up for boys? Oh, no, that means I have to know what Boar Boys do. Um, pause. Yeah, okay. I, I think I think all oh boys. Let's let's go over them, shall we? Uh, Fifteen points for one ball boy. One of them little fellas. Toughness four. Yep, T four. Um, uh, they they do they do struggle a little bit. They got weapon skill three. Um, they uh, and then their their boar is just basically another uh, uh, an, another orc. Um, but uh, they do have some really cool things. One would be, I believe, they have armored hide. So that means that when you take them with cavalry spears and shields, this is heavy infantry that gets to a three up. They're as good as a Bretonian night rob. That's pretty. That's 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 pretty good. People already really liked war boys, uh, and I think for good reason um, because they're they're genuinely heavy infantry, um, and uh, of course uh, they are something that you can take one unit of them with the big and special rule, which just gives them plus one strength uh, when they're in combat. Um, so that adds two points, gets them to seventeen points per model. Um, and, um, they are, um, just again, like, like really good heavy infantry. So when you're leaning into these guys in this list, now you had for free, like you pointed out impact hits, which in some ways of thinking is like a doubling of their potential damage output and you're giving them Vanguard. So they're able to really get, um, again, they're, they're more able to pick their, um, their engagements. They're able to choose where they go. Um, they are, Pretty damn good, uh, especially in the Nomadic Wa. So I think Boar Boys will be a core choice, unless you really want to lean into Wolf Riders and Kicknick and stuff like that. I don't know if that's something you can do, but like this, this to me is a really good thing. The other thing is is um, frenzy on these guys. Although I did notice that I wanted to flee a lot when I didn't get the charges I want. So frenzy, uh, uh, my opponent Pete had to keep pointing out that I wasn't allowed to flee because I was frenzied. Um, cause I took one unit with, uh, there's a banner in this, in this book that gives you frenzy, uh, on a unit. And you can also just upgrade one unit here, uh, as frenzied. You do lose your three up save, obviously, because you can't take heavy armor. Um, but it does, um, you know, you're still rocking, I guess, uh, um, a, uh, what would it be? It'd be a, a five up, uh, ain't bad. Um, and, uh, and you're getting again, that plus one attack. And as Rob points out a lot, there's just not a lot of attacks in this game. So being able to, to really like level up your attacks from the riders is is great. Um, Tusker Charge also gives the boar himself or itself a uh, plus one strength and minus one AP when they're on the charge. So again, just a nice little um, extra juice uh, for the actual mount, which right now is you know they're just a dude when uh, when uh, when when um, without Tusker Charge they don't really they're just you know a strength three attack at, at weapon skill three. So boar boys fundamentally was a bit of an oversight in our deep dive. Uh, but was a bit of a blind side to me because I haven't I hadn't been really engaging with with cavalry and that kind of stuff yet. Um, so just wanted to circle back and just say like these guys have a lot of really great rules, including things like uh, counter charge, furious charge. So they're also getting I actually totally missed that. Um, but so like so a frenzied a frenzied boar boy. Let's actually do that again on the charge has one attack base. One attack for Frenzy, one attack for Furious Charge. That's three strength five, plus Choppas, which gives you um, another minus one AP, uh, and uh, and also gives you, um, uh, I believe, uh, reroll wounds um, on uh, rolls of one. So, yeah, a lot of rules. Rules are good, right, Rob? Rules are good. I agree. Uh, yeah, I think Swift you, Stride. Yeah, you could definitely take these if you look at the uh, the frontage. Take these MSU multiple small units, get a lot of attacks, uh, generate them, uh, add them in with impact hits, and for half the cost that each one of your chosen Chaos Warriors is going to cost you. Obviously, not as defensive, but cavalry isn't meant to be defensive. It's meant to be fast. So yeah, you could take like little minimum units of five or six of these and do some really good stuff with them uh, because of the sheer volume of attacks which is hot because you can't get a lot of attacks in this game. You just can't. They don't want you to. No attacks. Mm -hmm. So no yeah, attacks. I, I think ball boys are going to be pretty spicy, I think, uh, you know, looking at that. And like I said, as soon as I saw impact hits, because I look, did look at it a couple of weeks ago, I was just yeah. like, you get impact hits, that's, that's better than anything else in the game. They happen first. Super good. Really nice into elves. Orcs and goblin players out there, you hate them elves. I know you do. Um, they hate being hit by impact hits hate it so it's pretty nice that's a great thing for the thumbnail 
Elves hate impact hits. Find out why. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think you can build some really fun stuff from the army. I would say of the two uh, different uh, armies of infamy, that's the more dynamic one. You've got some really fun list building opportunities. You've got some wacky list building opportunities. You've got yeah. potentially some strong list building opportunities. I think so. I uh, think so. And also something really fast. So I'd be pretty stoked if I was an Orca Goblin player. It's like the mystery box of the two. Like it's like you have the you have the pickup truck which we we're about to talk about. Like we know what it does. I think we do. Maybe and I'm probably underselling troll orc because troll orc's sick too. But it just feels kind of like you kind of know why a troll is good. But then you have the mystery box of this like dynamic, fast moving, can ambush, like you got to take a lot of goblins. You don't really want to, but like, hey, maybe we can make them work. You know, they got black orcs on chariot. We didn't even talk about the black orc chariot. Black orc chariot is a is is a new unit in here. Yeah, it's a chariot that you can take a black orc on. You can put um, the the bosses on those uh, on those uh, on the black orc chariot. That just uh, just again, like you you can um, you can make them really defensible. They're immune right now to killing blow and uh, monster slayer. Uh, so it's an interesting little niche thing having a really powerful and and tanky character on uh, a chariot, believe it or not, because they they can't really be one shotted. They can still take troll hide trousers, uh, or they can take the new armor that's in this book. Um, again, my brain melted trying to find it, but there's definitely lots of really cool play there. Building your black orc character on a black orc chariot, black orc chariots themselves are awesome. You can give them great weapons. You get, you know, on the charge. That's four great weapon attacks with black orcs. I mean. This is a this is a cool ass army, and I'm really looking forward to printing up a lot of avatars of war for it. Because if you don't like the regular board chariot, check out avatars of war, bro. Well, help out Val in the comments. Uh, write your best black orc uh, black orc boss build. Drop those in the comments. Give him, yes, give, him your in, give him your insights as to why. I'm sure he'll be really excited to read those and and look through them. Absolutely. Oh, I will actually this. Uh, Comments in general, Rob, on this one, I will be I will be looking to the uh, the wisdom of the mob. No, wisdom of the whatever it is. Eh, wisdom of the mob. The whole whatever. The horde. Much better put, Rob. The next one. What do we got? The orc and goblin horde. Uh, troll horde. We've got so anyone who loves everyone who loves a big old fella. This is the one for you. Maybe not as dynamic, but definitely strong. So let's look at what you could take in this list. You can have one orc war boss or orc weird knob per thousand points. And you can have multiple mm -hmm. orc big bosses, weird knobs, goblin bosses, goblin shamans, and troll queens in there as well. Troll queen. Which is great. She's back. And our princess. Yeah. And then for core, you have to go at least 33% of your army's points value. Must be spent on no troll problem. mobs. Um, then you can have one addition troll mob, maybe taken as a core choice per troll hack taken. You can have an orc mob. Goblin mob, multiple orc mobs, goblin mobs, goblin spider uh, spider riders, and goblin wolf riders. And then for special, you can have troll mobs, unsurprisingly, goblin wolf chariots, and then you can have one orc boy boar mobs, and then one orc boy chariots, and then you can have giants in here as well. And again, you can bring in those ogres and the bone grinder. So yes, sir. don't think it's going to be too difficult to get that many trolls in this list, uh, which is nice. How do you feel about the mm -hmm. army composition? Up to 33% for the core. Yes. Um, well, I think they want you to take trolls, Rob. And Lord, can you ever? Um, I think again, got to call out here: economy of choice. What are some like the the uh, the chestnuts of? And I don't know if this is by if this is on accident or by accident or not. If they realized how good Night Gobos and Black Orcs were, and that they would really dominate list building in in the sort of the the Grand Army, because again, they take away. Those real like auto not auto includes, but like you want to includes um from of the night goblins and the and the black orcs. And they replace it by enabling you to take um some very resilient trolls. Um and um yeah, I think it's great. You can still take uh, you know, a, a war boss on a wyvern or something like that if you wanted, um, to give yourself that that sort of really movable character piece. Um but uh, it's 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 again it's addition by subtraction, and that to me is great design, right? I, I agree. I agree. I think the fact that you know obviously it pushes you hard into this is fine. Like you said in one of the previous videos, I think one of the great things about uh, the old world, specifically, you know, someone asked earlier about in the chat about 
going up to larger points values. I think one of the fun things about the old world is the restriction causes choice. And that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's super nice yes. for everyone involved, in my personal opinion. So yeah, I love yeah. that, which is cool. Yeah, and I, I, I do love the idea of running a bunch of trolls. I think I would be quite excited to see what this looks like on the tabletop and play with. Well, is there, is there any that. sort of way I can do that? Rob, what a what a lovely uh, layup you just set uh, set up for me uh, on YouTube. Probably, uh, well, if you're watching this right when this drops, it'll be later this week. Uh, I will be playing the Troll Horde list on Tabletop Tactics. Now, it is a purposefully defanged Troll Horde list uh, because um, they can be quite strong. Uh, but I think it will give you a really good idea of how it looks on the table, and it's it's a lot of fun. And that, that I play against the Bod. So it's a it's it's a sing songy good time. I, I uh, I'm interested to see how it goes. But yeah, you can see it on Tabletop Tactics. Me when I was over in the UK playing the Troll Horde on their channel should be fun. Sweet. Uh, well, super excited to watch that when it comes out. Should we look at the army special rules? So curious to see how it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. So curious. Uh, uh, <laughs> Will Val be super corny or not? We'll find out. Stay tuned, guys. Um, yeah, let's look at these special rules, Tommy. Uh, I will be listening to it on mute, of course. Uh, all right. <laughs> Enhanced regeneration. Models of the regeneration X special rule. Within a troll horde, army may reroll any failed regeneration saves against wounds caused by non-magical attacks. Kind of makes, immediately makes you think, probably won't take anything that doesn't have regeneration in there as well. Also, um, what I love about this is that means you can give your special character regeneration or a character regeneration, and in addition, they'll get to reroll their failed regens as well. So it's nice. So it also adds a little bit more survivability to your characters who you give magic item to. So and everyone, do you, want to tell me, do you want to tell me about troll pants? Yeah, I was going to say shout out troll hide trousers, which gives you uh, plus one to your armor value and uh, regeneration. So you can have a black orc flying around. Uh, on a two up save on a wyvern sorry a wyvern with a two up save uh, uh you could go so far if you want to make him ultra tanky you could give him uh the five up uh, ward and a five up re-rolling regen save that's four saves everybody four saves uh kind of stupid but it's something you can do we love that that's great so that's actually super powerful and obviously good and obviously it just makes trolls which are so the points of trolls aren't changed. This is an important thing to kind of talk about. The points of trolls aren't changed, and I think already think mm -mm. trolls are good. My personal opinion. Mm -hmm. um, the points aren't changed, but they're just better. So they're just better. They're yeah. just better. So if you love trolls, this is the place to play them. And if they're fairly pointed in the normal book, then they're underpointed in this book, which makes them very, very, very good. And this is this isn't all, Rob. We got other things we can do to make trolls better in this list. Something I will I, I would love to shout out, which is actually a cool insight, and I did run into and didn't realize that's what I was that's what was happening, is that regen saves count towards uh, combat res, combat res mm -hmm. right? So if even if you are making all of these saves, kind of quietly, you can be losing combat, mm -hmm. and and um, that's just an interesting thing. So anyone is like, oh, this is crazy op. I don't know. It, it's it is an inter it's a very interesting way of 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 buffing this this army because trolls are very low leadership innately, um, and um, so it's very possible for them to just book it out of combat because they've lost even though they may have killed more um, and survived without without a scratch they may still lose combat because of 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 uh, making a bunch of regen saves. So just something to think about it, it uh, both as the player and if you're facing it thinking like oh god. I'm facing an unkillable wall of of troll meat. Um, well, not so fast, guys. There's other ways to to do things in old world than just straight killing. Um, and I think that's cool. Well, two things to say about that. Number one, it, nothing's stopping you taking an unkillable wall of troll meat. And then number two, uh, I think <laughs> I think I think it's really nice the difference between uh, how the way they've changed up regeneration so that you got to also be flammable to to lose regeneration against flaming attacks. And then uh, in addition to that, they've made it count towards combat res. So they gave it kind of a buff, but they also gave it a debuff, which I think is quite elegant. Yeah. So again, shout out to the rules guys. I think this is good. Shout out. I think it's really good design. Yeah, man. Uh, our next rule is oi dis. Way, unless the character is fleeing for any troll mobs in the troll horde army that within combat range of an orc shaman, goblin shaman, or troll hag can use the leadership characteristic of that character instead of their 
own. This is particularly burr, effective. Burr, burr, burr. This is particularly effective, obviously, for stupidity because all trolls yes. are not the brightest. Very stupid. Not the. That's very nice. That's a nice way of putting it, Rob. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I would also like to be referred to as not the brightest sometimes. That's ni- that's nicer. It's actually how I wake up. Alexa says, "Good morning. You're not the brightest la- fella. <laughs> Keep going, lad." Uh, so I, 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 I appreciate the trolls' thoughts every day. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Can we just shout out trolls in general? They're just they're such lovable idiots. As is the the troll queen. But anyway, I love them. Yeah, they try their best. Exactly. They're trying really hard. Right. So this is good. Obviously, this week hungry. makes stupidity, which is obviously the negative for this army, uh, much less uh, impactful. So I think that's that's genuinely very good. Yes, absolutely. Do we want to? Um... Do you want to swing straight to their lore of magic? Because this is a first for Old World. Yes, uh, Troll Tongue. In addition to laws of magic, they may normally know spells from Orcs, uh, Shamans, Goblin Shamans of the Troll Horde, may know the spells from the law of Troll Magic. Who'd have thought bum, 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 bum. Uh, Which is super fun. So let me just go grab that for everybody, uh, which is cool and cool. And the law of Troll Magic. Uh, and they've got some great spells. First one, Big Smarts. This is a signature spell. It's an enchantment. Enchantment. Cast on an oh. eight. It's ranged self. Remains in play while this spell is in play. Front of the unit command range this model may reroll any failed stupidity tests. In addition, if a front of the unit this command range this model, when this spell is cast, uh, failed its stupidity test during the start of turn sub phase, then they can immediately make the test again. So it's super important spell for the army. It's a very great spell, easy to get a bunch of times in the army if you want to have it a couple of times. Um, and uh, again, yeah, really limiting the the downside of going stupid. And also, I think this it becomes a little awkward just because of how the timing works because it's an enchantment, but it allows you to retroactively reroll because you do stupidity, mm-hmm. I think, right at the That's top right. of the turn. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so if you if you fail your stupidity, uh, you're then able to um, uh, remake that test. And I don't think you move until the compulsory move phase. It's one of those weird things about old world. So you can basically undo uh, a stupid, basically give them a whack upside the head magically. And uh, and your trolls uh, get get back into fighting shape. So really, really great um, thing to help mitigate uh, trolls. This this is um, I, I called out before. Like this is also the first totally bespoke lore of magic um, that they've done. Um, normally they just added some sync spells for the other 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 um, you know armies out there. <laughs> um, so these really do key on things that are good for a troll horde. It'll be interesting to see because you can take it, obviously, in uh, non-troll hordes. Um, it'll be interesting to see if anyone finds play outside of it. But obviously, this is very troll-centric, helping your trolls get better. I think I think we will see this in the future, which I'm quite excited about. Obviously, with dwarfs on the horizon, probably won't see it in dwarfs. Uh, but I could I would expect to see maybe expanded spell laws for warriors of chaos uh, and other armies such as that. I, like you know, going into the different gods, I think that'd be really fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so definitely can yeah. see that, defo. Okay, so uh, the next spell is a city bar, which is a magic missile cast on a range of 18. Uh, place a small three-inch blast template so its central hole is directly over the center of the target. Enemy unit, once placed, the template will scatter D3 plus one inches. Any enemy model whose base lies underneath the template, final position, risk being hit, uh, and suffers a strength three hit with an AP of two. I'm going to say that that's fine. It's just a fine spell. I'm going to say this is a great option to swap out for your signature. <laughs> Love that. Next one is Troll Brains, though. You can probably want this. Hex, casting value of 9, range 15, remains in play. While this one is in play, the target enemy unit becomes subject to stupidity and reduces oh. the leadership by 1. And they can't yeah. re-roll. They're not, they're not smart trolls like you guys. They're dumb trolls. So dumb there's troll. no re-rolls for them. That's right. I kind of wish, because of the way some of the other things are worded, that this was a Hex slash enchantment because there are some things that key off of the unit being stupid. Um, so it'd be, be cool if you could make your own guys have troll brains to be able to buff them with something else. But, uh, yeah, great, great little utility spell, uh, especially against things maybe that, that don't have very good, uh, leadership, uh, like other orcs and goblins, for example, in certain situations. Uh, the next one is Ravenous Recourse, which is a conveyance spell, cast on eight range self. To the end of this turn, all friendly units that have the stupidity special rule that within 12 inches of the caster gain plus two modifier to their movement, which is obviously stunning and brave. Trolls are a base movement of six, so that gets them up to eight. Um, it is really good. 
Really good. I've, I found myself using that. Ravenous Recourse uh, was a star of this uh, lineup for sure. Yeah, I think it's a great spell. Great spell. Obviously, yep. all the things. You could charge easier with your very heavy combat army. Fetid Whirlpool mm -hmm. is a magical vortex. Cast on a 9, a range of 18. Remains in play. Place a small 3-inch blast template so there's eccentric holes within 18 inches of the caster. Whilst in play, the template is treated as dangerous terrain, which I love. The template moves D6 inches in a random direction during every start turn subphase. Any enemy unit that's moving through the template touches or moves over. Suffers D3 plus 3 strength for hits, uh, each with an AP of minus 2. Can I just talk about one of my favorite things about uh, magical vortexes is yeah. casting them behind a unit you're about to charge behind so you beat them up and if they fall back in order or give ground you've got that additional potential attrition obviously you've got to be in the right situation but rage 18 is pretty massive it's pretty very massive. far for it's very far isn't it for for a uh, for a vortex that is that's far normally i wouldn't um, normally i wouldn't mention it but you know the, yeah. fact, the fact that you can make a piece of dangerous terrain be behind a unit you're about to beat up with a unit of trolls. They fall back and yeah. then a few more guys start taking dangerous terrain tests. It's pretty fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can't disagree with that. And also, the reverse of that, just food for thought, if you put if you put even, like, because we, we I, I mean, I love Crystal Column, which is impassable terrain for controlling charges and movement, but even a piece of dangerous terrain means that they're if they're charging through it, that's uh, uh, 2d6, pick the lowest on their charge on their charge and minus one to their movement. So it can be a defensive piece too. Um, so yeah, it gives you some great play. I'd say this is not an obvious swap out. I'd say this is, uh, I mean, on top of that, d3 plus three strength, four hits, AP neg two, that ain't, that ain't nothing. That's pretty damn good. It's really good. It's really good. Obviously, it's random. I think you could do a lot with Vortexes like when you yeah. play them well. Torrent of Filth is an assailment spell. Cast on an eight, range in combat. And you place a fame template that says the narrow end touches the caster's base and the broad end is over the unit they engage with. Any model whose base lies underneath the template risk being hit suffers a single strength he hit with an AP of two. So this is fine to rubbish. And I think we should just move on to number six, which is an, I agree. an enchantment, uh, which is Castle on nine with a range of 12 inches. Until the end of this turn, uh, until the end of your next start of turn subphase, the target friendly gains flammable and regeneration of five plus. So you can make that a unit is... be regen. Regen goes really great with your giant buddies who are coming along for the, uh, the troll smash throwdown. Um, I mean, what more could be said? That's badass. It's great. It's wonderful. I love a good bit of, uh, like, I love, yeah, exactly. If you take the right unit, give them regen, fantastic. I'd say, though, Troll Brains feels very fun. Ravenous Recourse feels like your auto pick that you're going to want to go for. And obviously, you want the signature spell. It's like an auto include, right? Uh, yeah, I, I would say so. Um, yeah, you definitely want big smarts. Probably want a couple big smarts. Um, because uh, we'll probably talk about Ugdras, uh, but uh, the Troll Princess especially is a level 2 caster. Mm -hmm. I don't think she can get to level 3, so um, you probably can't rely on her necessarily to always get it off. I agree. All right, so let's do let's 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 definitely talk about Ogdrug Swamp Digger, uh, who's mm -hmm. a 195 point orc weird knob special character. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's level three caster, which you can't get up to a level four. Uh, but he knows the spells from the following laws of magic, elementalism and troll magic, which is uh -huh. what I call my lovemaking. Um, and he's got some special rules. Uh, to troll caller, unless he is fleeing, <laughs> <laughs> unless he is fleeing, friendly troll mobs within Odrug's command range may use his leadership characteristic instead of their own. And he is leadership mm -hmm. eight, which is nice. Yep. And what's nice too is that that's uh, whether you're in Troll Horde or not. So Troll Horde obviously can use any character's leadership, but if you're just running trolls in your grand army, you can bring this guy and he's going to buff them nicely. Which I love. Uh, protect a boss. This model can be targeted by enemy shooting or by enemy spells whilst it's within three inches of friendly troll mob, unless his model is the closest target, which is, again, fantastic. Yep, gets the lone character rules. Agra's uh, uh, lore is that he was... Uh, a, a little too weird for his his tribe and he got outcasted and uh was um basically wrapped himself in some troll skin and was mistaken as a troll by a uh, a, a troll princess and uh, and so they think he's one of them so that's why he gets to to be protected 
yeah, I love that. I love his law. I think his law is actually really good. Uh, let us know fine. in the future if you want us to cover the special character laws on the channel, because I think that'd be really fun. Uh, then he's also got Siphon Strength. Whilst all ducks, Swamp Digger is within three inches of a friendly troll mob with a unit strength of six or more that's not fleeing, he may apply plus one modifier to any casting rolls he makes. So he casts like a level four. He just will only know the three spells. That's a good catch. I don't. I think I was dispelling with him as a level four in my battle report. So, whoopsie. Uh, but nonetheless, he's you're paying for a level three, essentially in his points, um, and then like twenty points for his extra stuff. So, not bad. He's basically he casts like a level four, like you just said. So that's pretty good. He also have we mentioned that he has? Um, I thought he had um, a law familiar. Yes, there it is. Thank you. Yes, so he has Lord Familiar, which means he also uses that up for the army. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something to remember. Yeah, I, yeah, I was gonna yeah touch on those, but definitely he's uh, he's also got siphon. We talked about siphon strength. He's also got Trollhide Shaw, uh, which Order Swamp Digger improves his armor by, by one. In addition, he has Regen five plus and flammable, uh, flammable. Sorry, and he's also got the Bogwood Staff, which is not bad. Um, requires two hands, it's strength plus two. But you're not using him to fight, even though he's toughness five, which is great with three <laughs> wounds. So that's that's not the worst. Tougher thing. than a troll, he is. He's tougher than a troll. Yeah. See, uh, the cool thing about his the cool thing about his weapon is if he does a wound, he gets one back. So that's kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're right. You probably if he's if he's in combat, it's it's probably a desperation play. <laughs> what I love is that he is a wizard that is going to cast like a level four that is untargetable. I think the protect the boss special rule is the one that I really love, and then obviously yep. the fact that you potentially can help some trolls out is really effective. So like whether or not you're taking him in a grand army or you're taking him in the troll horde, I think he's really, really effective for what he brings to the table. An uncharactable wizard. Uh, sorry, an untargetable wizard. Don't hate that. Don't hate it. Um, yeah, no, he's, he's great. Especially when you consider that the, tr especially if he's running troll, uh, troll magic, most of those are buffing spells. So they don't really, he doesn't really need to see. Um, and like the best damage spell, like we saw, was the uh, was the vortex, which has a long reach. Um, so um, you know he's not a bad guy to just be hanging back and and doing his job. Um, he's a nice little piece, and he has a cool model that we'll see someday. Uh, haven't checked out his toes yet, though. I don't know how nice his Soon. toes. Are. Swampy toes, I think. Swampy, maybe but webbed. Yeah. Next up, let's talk about the troll hags. Uh, unfortunately, yes. uh, tro the troll queens. How dare they? 235 <laughs> points for a troll queen mm -hmm. uh, with, at toughness five with six wounds. So nice wound dense model for quite cheap 235 points. Um, yes, sir. Uh, unfortunately, weapon skill and ballistic skill is pretty low and only has three attacks. So can't guarantee it to do the most output. Uh, but well, she's pretty much a giant, though. So like, let's, let's just wait to see. And the, those charts you're rolling on are pretty fun. They are fun. I agree. Uh, so then she got battle magic and troll magic access and is a level one wizard and can be upgraded to a level two wizard only, which I think is truly very sad. I would have liked a level four troll hack, to be honest. Uh, and or, like, or like Ogdra is like a, a level three. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, something a little bit more beefy because the level fours out there are kicking everyone's asses. So, and then may yeah. purchase, purchase magic items up to fifty points. Uh, and then it's got mm -hmm. a bunch of special rules. We've got flammable, obviously in conjunction with their five up regeneration. Immune psychology uh, is in there as well with D six stomp attacks at strength six, which is obviously wicked. Uh, stupidity causes terror, obviously because it's a big old monster. Is unbreakable and then has timber. And we'll talk through the other special rules as well. The stomp attacks can add a lot to combat res, definitely. Yep, which I think is fun. Uh, she's she's a hand. She's a real loving handful. Uh, I, I like she. She is genuinely good. And I guess one of the benefits of her being a hero level character, so she's not lord level, which is why she's capped at the level two. I think is, uh, you know, not not as restricted in how many you can take. Uh, so she's not a zero to one choice. She's you know in most any event format would be limited to it probably three, um, but. Um, yeah, she's she's something that you can take a couple of if you wanted. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think she's I think she's super interesting, Defo. Uh, she's got a special rule, indiscriminate hunger, which is very much like a giant uh, where they sweep up a sweep up model, put it in their uh, in their bag. I haven't, I don't see the restriction here on it being like an infantry model. I do say nominate uh, the, the troll hag is engaged in combat with. Doesn't say it's infantry. Um, uh, enemy unit. So yeah. Whoa. Whoa. 
Whoa. Just says unit. So, yeah. so you you could put an ogre in your mouth and keep eating you ogres. Put, oh, they you only can lose put one wound. Sorry, if this has to part, wait. Uh, the target must immediately lose a single wound. A single okay. wound. Oh, okay. okay They're so not just removed from play. Good. So it's slightly different. Okay. Yes. But you okay. Can keep They're not eating. just going to eat the dragon. They're not just going to eat the dragon. <laughs> but you can keep eating the dragon. Yes, true. Yeah. And this is also, this is outside of combat. This is just a way for her to regen a little bit. Um, so, you know, this little, little, uh, little amuse bouche for, for the, for the queen. A uh, little, little appetizer just to get her, get her wounds up because uh, it's happening in the command phase. So. We don't hate that though. We don't hate the idea yeah, of just munching on a dragon, uh, which is super mm -hmm. fun. Uh, and Pull then, a scale off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then also being able to heal a wound, which is super, super rare in the old world. It's incredibly Absolutely. rare. So, uh, like, it's not just not wildly rare, but like, yeah, it's rare enough that that's a big deal. Recursion in old world is nothing like some of the other game systems. So, very, very sure. cool. Uh, then Recursion. Got, Word of the day. Uh, nice. Wow. Don't. Everyone's gonna be mad that I used it. Was, Why? We're, we're having a fight on the internet right now about recursion being the word. Oh, sorry. I didn't I didn't know that. I was genuinely like, that's a good word. I that agree. was genuine. That I was agree, genuine. But, but I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't trolling you. Nice. Nice. I'd like to recuse myself from this conversation on that subject. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you should be a Supreme Court justice. All right, let's go. Wow, they don't recuse themselves. Uh, nope, never. Mother, motherly love is the next attack. Instead of attacking normally during the combat phase, a troll hag may choose to make a motherly love attack to do so. Nominate yes. an enemy unit that the troll hag is engaged with. He gets roll on the table. One to two, you smother them. The troll hag throws her massive arms around a foe in a terrible embrace. Place a large five-inch blast template so that its central hole is directly over the center of the target. Any model, friend or foe. Uh, it takes a strength characteristic. It takes a hit at the strength characteristic of this model, which is six, with an AP of two. Mm -hmm. That is huge. That is a big. This is, it's, as, it's as big as a big lady troll. That's how huge it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. Very big. Mother, Quite tall. the troll hag chastises her foe as if it were a wayward offspring. <laughs> Nominate a single model in the fighting rank of the target unit to be the target of this attack. That model is hit with D three plus one wounds. With no armor or regeneration saves permitted, wards can still be made. That's insane. Yowza. That's very good. It's insane. You could auto snipe a lord with that. Easy. Yeah, or, or like any, and uh, like any, like again, hero level, hero tier character that just happens to be fighting nearby. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. And if I'm not wrong, um, the model's hit and suffers D three plus one wounds. Um. Yeah, like oh, that's decent for combat res, you know, that's up to four combat res. Because that's one of the things about like giant tables when you're rolling on them is that like sometimes you get the like kill a specific thing mm -hmm. and you don't want that. But, you know, this still has a chance to have enough damage. Yeah. Even if you're just punking a one win model. <clears throat> yeah, I think, yeah, this plus the stomps after should be like pretty nice. Oh, good point on the stomps. Yep. Yeah. And then you got Mither. Uh, the troll hag bombards the enemy with a tirade of slaps and a torrent of unintelligible trollish in invective. The target even suffers D6 plus one hits, each using the strength, which is six, with no armor saves permitted, which is wild. Nice. Ward and regen can be taken. In addition, so shocked is the target that until the end of his turn, it suffers a <laughs> minus one modifier to its leadership characteristic, which is wickedly cool. Yes. Uh, so when you, when you stack on the stomps, as you pointed out again, uh, is it, she's got, she got some moves in combat and she's, she's so good. There's more. Yes. She got slimy shanks as a special rule. Uh, and then model that directs its attacks against it, uh, is minus one to hit, which is great because it's not very well armored. Uh, and then you've got troll vomit and swamp breath. So swamp breath is obviously a breath weapon, strength three, but AP two, which is amazing. Uh, and yep. then you've got Troll Vomit, which is done in combat, uh, Strength 3, AP 2, uh, and it's uh, Troll Hag that's in base contact with any model may make one additional attack uh, each turn with this weapon. This attack may, may last after them all as well. So it's just an extra one, which is fine. So, you know, like, I think there's an argument to be made. You get yourself, uh, you get yourself a Troll Queen. Maybe you uh, shout out to Danny uh, for this one, uh, a friend of mine on... on uh, on Old World Charmed, you can also get yourself Trug, which is an AOS model. I think maybe you could have a Troll King and Queen. And then you got two of these, two of these stomping around. They look great together. What a what a pair! And then uh, that's that can be like the 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 heart of your troll army. Yeah, super good. I think I think it's really fun. You could do some really fun stuff 
really, really fun stuff with uh, the troll princess. Uh, maybe the the casting is a side note. Maybe just have level one. Um, you know, just run them as bare bones as possible. Yeah, you know what, man? I don't know if you're wrong there. Like, do you spend that thirty five points to get that extra pip? Uh, because you're 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 just rolling and praying for something like pretty high on the dice because like, you're probably getting dispelled by a level four. So maybe you're right. Maybe you just go level one, grab the signature spell, and then use her for for you know buffing leadership and um and beating beaten fannies. Oh wait, a fanny's different where you are. Sorry about that, guys. Um, my bad. Uh, where I'm from, fanny refers to your bum. Just to be clear. <laughs> Is that probably <laughs> um, very, different, very different in the very UK. different, very different in the UK? I'm glad I actually knew that. Um, but yeah, so Troll Troll Princess is awesome. I think she's great and can be taken in regular armies too. Uh, she goes into the rare slot. I think she's just a better giant. To be honest with you, that 35 points is getting you a better, uh, like a lot of lot lot better rules. Uh, she can take 50 points of magical items. Again, I just I just. The only reason I'm shouting this out is because I don't want to just be stealing all of his ideas. But Danny also throw, uh, told me that he's been running her with um, there's a minus one to be hit item. So that gives her minus two to be hit in combat. That sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen lots of that, of that at events, people stacking a unit that's naturally minus one to hit inside another unit where they've taken an item or a banner, mm -hmm. whether an additional minus one to hit, which is super effective. So I've seen that a lot, uh, events especially. So I think that's going to be something you see, you know, people build into, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Uh, should we touch on the Bone Grinder Giant? I'd love to. I'd love to. This guy's pretty, pretty G'd up. Um, I'd love, first thing I really want to shout out before you dive into it is the base size on here, 50 by 100 millimeter. That's what the Forge World OG Bone Grinder comes on. And then, weird, also available on 100 by 150. Why ever would that be? I think probably so that you can take Mega Gargants as your bone grinder, which I have. So I have a, uh, I have a, I have a reason to have gotten a Mega Gargant. I love him. He's awesome. And he's on a 100 by 150. So you have options here. You don't just have to build the resin. You can also do one of the really cool new Mega Gargants. Sweet. Uh, that's, they're very cool. Um, apart from in Age of Sigmar or ever. Uh, just as a well, they look they they look good. I think they, they you, do you like you don't like the model? I unfortunately you're talking to an AC model player, so like I have PTSD. Okay, about, sorry, it's trick, sorry, PTSD. sorry, trigger warning. My mistake. PTSD. I apologize. They had a, they had, they had to seven, me, it was they had a seventy percent win rate for ten months. It was just, it was I've never <laughs> that sucks. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to use that model, which I've always thought looked cool. And I'm just saying for all those people out there who thought they look cool, here's here's a guilt free way to use them because they're good, but. Uh, maybe not 70 70 percent wouldn't rate good 10 months uh, i think uh the uh, i quite like um the king broad model actually i think that's quite cool with a big hammer like mm -hmm. that's very fun uh that'd be fun um okay so uh yeah <laughs> uh, so it's got toughness six with eight wounds eight yep. wounds for 300 points uh, mm -hmm. which is nice it's, it's 50 percent more than a regular giant yeah. Uh, so not too bad for what you get. Uh, very, very good. Uh, and then it has D6 plus one stomper tanks, uh, causes terror, is unbreakable, like almost all these are. Uh, it's got the mercenaries keyword. Uh, it's close order as well, which is nice. Immune psychology, which is also nice. Uh, like, and then it obviously has its own special types of attack. The bone grinder, like, and it's got, does it say what armor it has? I don't think it has any armor. No armor. Uh, Color side, light armor. It's got six yeah, up save. There you go. Yeah, Pete was giving me a six up, so there you go. Yep. Um, I think the only thing to call, if, if in the interest of time, I think the biggest thing to call out on this is just that unlike Troll Hag and regular Giants, uh, the Bone Grinder has specific attacks depending on what you're fighting. So he's got three ba basically, um, you know, they, they hit infantry and cavalry, chariots and something else, and then big monsters. And they have basically different trees that they can hit on, which are more. Uh, targeted towards those unit types so basically he's gonna he doesn't suffer the rolling the wrong thing on the chart as much as the troll hag and, and regular giants would so i think that's what really separates him in a lot of ways um and then on top of that is just a lot of meat to to, to chew through although not impossible however you can in this army you can throw a reject on him um and makes him that much more re resilient 
Um, so just a, I don't know. I think he's a great addition. Uh, if you if, if you're ever like, I don't know what to put in my army, uh, put in a bone grinder. Put in a big old bone grinder and go beat some people up. I think it looks very cool. Should we cover the magic? Anything items? you wanted to talk? Oh, sorry, and I cut you off. Anything you wanted to call out on the bone grinder? No, I think I think that they're I think that they're very cool. I would say if we were talking about the troll hut, if we were talking about the troll army in particular, um, I have been pretty convinced recently. If anyone is out there um, and wants to run multiple small units of trolls. Uh, I'm mm. pretty convinced that um, that the game is not really built very well when it comes to monstrous models in mind. And once people start to work that oh, yeah. out, uh, monstrous infantry, monstrous cavalry, once people start to really work that out, I think you'll see that become fairly meta uh, because it just is sensationally good. Uh, you know, and then having small bricks of trolls, which can, you know, if one does, if your large brick does fail stupidity at exactly the wrong time, even with a reroll, even with using other leadership, that's obviously a disaster. But different like um msu multiple small units of trolls you're going to reliably start to pass those in the places that you need and then just keep sending them in i think would be very effective uh you know and troll hags are another good example you know that's a lot of power in a single model uh, you're not going to take that out in one swing in most cases uh so mm -hmm. you know then you've got to be dealing with like what is an out a outrageous amount of output so i think i think that's one thing i would say about that that's pretty good i already looked at running trolls or chaos trolls in my uh, Warriors of Chaos Army. So I think that they're good already. Yeah. Uh, so they get better in this. That's that's all I need, really. <laughs> it's good. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say this is very good. And it's a really nice difference between the two different uh, armies from yes. this book. Um, Troll Horde is really cool because I think, again, on its face value, it's, it's like it's brute strength power. Something to really say too about trolls uh, in general is I think there's there, there's toughness for strength five, so if you give them great weapons, which you always always give them great weapons, I think I don't think there's a reason not to because they're initiative one innately. Um, you know that's a strength seven core infantry model. You know that's got all of its attacks on a on a forty millimeter base. I know I've been outspoken about being mad that they're on 40 millimeters and not 50s. I think I'm less mad about it now that I've actually had it on the table. I, a lot of times I was like, I wish this unit was smaller. So I had more, <laughs> so I had more in, in, in actual base to base. So that's actually a, 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 a benefit here uh, that they actually just, you, you're going to have to cram your stone, tr stone trolls, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I think this, this army is cool. And like Rob's saying, it has the opportunity to go because you can take units of one, you can go MSU um, and you can bring a lot of big stompy things um, it doesn't have to be all send. I think you can also, you know, play this with with uh, some strategery in mind. Yeah, it's super fun. It's a super fun yeah. build. Uh, so then let's just talk through the magic items because you can also take these in another orc and goblin army now as well, which I think is pretty spicy. Uh, so that yeah, that's a big that's a big departure from the first two arcane journals. I I might I don't think I'm mistaken in saying that like these are these are available to all orcs and goblins uh, as opposed to the other arcane journals, which I think were locked to the armies of infamy for the most part. It yes. might be on a unit on a, a, a so like that. That's a big, big, big difference, um, and worth considering. Yeah, I think this is actually really good because like now, kind of, kind of not forced into, but you know, you've got more options. So probably going to want to pick this book up for that reason alone. Okay, first up, bigger, choppier axe, strike plus two, AP two, killing blow. There we go. You want a way to deal with some more or some uh, trolls? Magical attacks mm -hmm. requires two hand and strike last though, uh, for fifty five points. How do you feel about this? Eh, I yeah. think uh, it's yeah, it's 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 uh, it's going to be tough to beat the choppiest the choppiest choppa as your go to magic weapon in arcs and goblins. Um, I think there's lots of fun ones. Uh, I don't know if anything really does anything really stand out for you for magic weapons in this list. Uh, I mean, Bad. I like going through all of them. I think they're all interesting. Oh sure, okay, um, cool. Let's go. Martug's Beast Bashes, 50 points, strength plus one, AP two, magical attacks requires two hands. Uh, and you get plus one to your weapon skill and initiative, which I think is nice uh, because you just get to go faster, which I love. I love mm -hmm. that. Uh, the Accurate Axe, it's only 30 points, strength plus one, armor pay magic attacks, and the wielder may reroll any fail rolls to hit made uh, while using it. However, the weapon strength and modifier only applies during the first round of combat. So rerolls to hit, I think, is quite nice into some of these units and armies uh, sorry some of these characters sure. uh because you normally the weapon skill for this army isn't super high um yeah uh, uh, characters usually do okay um um 
one thing on this I would have loved to see is like even just minus one AP with armor bane. Then then I would be I'd be thinking about the accurate the accurate axe because uh, it's also not two handed, so you still get your shield. Um, but yeah, when you don't have AP on, as base on your weapons, it's always going to make me be like, nah, 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 give it a second. Because you also lose choppas in orcs, so you sort of lose that that buff to AP. Um, so yeah, um, I like I like the, the for fun weapons. I like the ones we've seen so far. But the next one, I think the next one's fun. The back the backstabber's blade, strength plus one, yes, AP one, magical attacks, goblin bosses, night goblins, Ooh, yeah. goblin bosses only. The wield of this weapon engage in a flank. It may re-roll any failed rolls to hit to wound. If the wield of this weapon is engaged in the rear, you can re-roll any fail to hit and to wound. Little little, little hob maybe maybe this was forged by a hobgoblin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, like I I like that one. That one's pretty cool. Uh, especially like that might be something great to put on um like a, a night goblin uh, war boss or boss, big boss on one of the squig hoppers to go around and give him a little extra oomph and um, and uh, kill things. Surely, surely, also really good on uh, a, a, a a goblin boss on a wolf that we've put into reserve. Uh, sorry, uh-huh. into ambush. You know, and it uh-huh. pops up. I mean, great opportunity to literally kit bash like an, uh, a ninja goblin on a ninja wolf. Aww. Yeah, that would be super fun. Uh, so I think that's that's you ninja great. fire wolf. That's that's that is that is the hobby challenge we give to you. Yeah, I'd Maybe like to like see a, a bandana ninja on wolf. Yes, sir. I think it's actually just the, a bandana. the those new those new wolves. Uh, on the Goblin Riders are all like twisty and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like maybe they, that's a good base for a ninja wolf. That'd be super fun. Or just on the back of another goblin dressed as a wolf. <laughs> now we're cooking. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, magic armor. You got Da'ard armor, which is 35 points. Black Hawk bosses and all bosses whose troop type is infantry, cavalry or chariot only. Uh, then you get full play armor, so a four up save, and the bear improves their toughness by one, which is pretty nice. Uh, very nice. Um, now, this is a good big call out here is it can't be on the Wyvern Black Orc, mm-hmm. uh, but this is great on um, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, either a, a boss on a, on a Black Orc Chariot, probably a war boss on a Black Orc Chariot. Really, really, really good fit there. Um, or if you are just bringing a sword and like a, a guy stomping along with your big unit of, of Black Orcs, can't go wrong with being a little extra tough. I think it's pretty nice. Spiteful Shield's 20 points, mm. and in addition uh, to being a shield, uh, any model that rolls a natural one when making or to hit to hit or to wound against the wielder uh, suffers a strength four hit with an AP of dash, which isn't bad. I don't hate that for 20 points. That's a fun... Oh, you've got a blender, a blender Lord, have you? Then let's get into it. This is pretty fun. I like the Spiteful Shield. Yeah, it's always great to have magical shields just to be able to get your armor up. Um fantastic yep uh, but uh, what i like though is yeah yeah it's i think it's quite fun i think that would work actually yeah. quite well in the right situation uh talisman sparkly wizard finder it's 45 points the bearer uh finds has magic resistance too and hatred enemy wizards it's pretty fun as well that's pretty fun that that is that is very fun and there's a lot of wizard characters out there troll princesses for example uh spring to mind immediately um, but uh, hatred's always good. Rerolling hits. Um, this is a talisman, so it's not an arcane thing, even though it's magic related. And magic resistance, just full stop, is great. Uh, so you're basically getting the hatred enemy of wizards for free. Um, versus, I think the uh, the the common item is twenty points for magic res negative one. Mm-hmm. So you know that's that's forty points. You're getting five points to hate enemy wizards. Not bad. Um, and magic res is really good on on fancy units. Uh, anything that that is dangerous to you. Yeah. I agree. Uh, the Effigy of Mork and any model that directs its attacks against the bearer of the Effigy of Mork during the combat phase offers a minus one to its hit modifiers. So now we've got a minus two to hit uh, Troll Lady. Mm-hmm. Pretty spicy. Uh, oh, now we're getting a banner. Orcs have some wonderful, awesome banners and the hits keep coming here, I think. Having just come from a uh, a historicals trade show this weekend... Mm-hmm. The, uh, people, there were people who were selling banners, like pre-made, pre-painted banners, and I was like, "Oh, this would work so well in old world if you could." Oh uh, hell yeah, that was so good. They were on little sticks. You could buy it, and it was all just pre-painted. So good. I'd love to see those be something people make, but they probably won't. Uh, the magic standards, uh, the, ang- the, the angry lads flag unit carrying this flag gains frenzy. Mm-hmm. Which is great good. on your 
on your uh well i don't know if it's great maybe great on your uh on your um big ended uh boar boys unit to give them like so many attacks a lot of attacks a lot, a of lot. Attacks. yeah a lot uh, then you've got Despite a Banner, which is 35 points. Carry, a unit carrying this gains the Poison Attack Special Rule. And if the unit already has the Poison Attack Special Rule, then it goes to a 5 or a 6 rather than just a 6. And don't forget, Poison auto wounds on a roll of a 6 to hit. Uh, so that's pretty nice, in my personal opinion. This banner is really, really, really good. It has multiple uses. It's a classic from uh, from the from the old Orc and Goblin army list. Um, just a few uses that spring to mind. Big, big honking brick of, of Goblin Wolf Riders, maybe ambushing, popping up, dumping a bunch of poison arrows into something. That's pretty cool. Um, one of my favorites is in the Troll Horde. You might want to have a block of core infantry buffing a caster, for example, and giving them a big leadership uh, buff. Um, let's say they're frenzied uh, two-hand weapon orcs, um, like so the old savage orcs, for example. You give them the spider spider banner. Now that they're now they're swinging, although they're strength three, they're swinging poison on their attacks. So that's a bucket of poison attacks once they get into combat. Um, it's re it's really good. And then you can also just use it on the good old fashioned spider rider uh, 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 thing. I guess there's no other way to get poison. Uh, but if you want the fives or sixes uh, to hit to trigger the, the the poison, big old brick of spider riders. Perfect. The next one is the banner of the nomads, which is 25 points. When unit carrying this banner makes a charge, flee or pursuit roll, they may re-roll that dice. Oh, sorry, any rolls of a one, sorry, before discarding any dice that are required to be discarded. Pretty nice if you're trying to chase units down. I think this is cute. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cheap as well. It's 25 points. Things like that, I sometimes think, you know what, that might be more useful than I give it credit for just because it's cheap. Rerolls. Rerolls on charges and pursuits and stuff is super rare. That's great, in my opinion. It, it can be it can be gotten, especially in Orcs and Goblins, but I often don't find myself reaching for it, and maybe that's wrong. Um, maybe it's something like yesterday I failed to charge. Definitely decisively changed the game. Um, so maybe I should have had something to let me reroll some shit. I think rerolling charges is very good in this game, especially if you can get it on infantry. Spike a six for a big long charge mm -hmm. is not bad. Yep. Uh, Banner yep. of the Wilds, 20 points. Unit carrying Banner of the Wild gains the move through cover special rule, which is okay. That's fine. There's enough terrain on the board, but not too much that I think I care about that, to be honest. Yeah, it, I mean, the only thing I could think of is maybe if you're playing, like, for example, in the uh, square base GT format, force are dangerous. So if you do have a big expensive unit of cavalry or something that you really don't want losing, like I, everyone's rolled a, a handful of dice and expected to lose one or two guys and have lost a lot more than that. Uh, so maybe it'd be useful. I'm looking forward to maybe the day where they errat it so that move move through cover also ignores the um, uh, roll 2d6, drop the highest penalty on charges um, because that currently isn't a thing. So maybe one day they'll buff move through cover because right now, I think there's not enough to it to make it worth it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, enchanted items, necklace of blessed teeth. The bearer of the necklace uh, may reroll any armor save roll, uh, ward save roll, or regeneration soul save roll of a one, which is especially nice if you can get this on a, a character that's got two up armor save for in some way. Two up armor save. Um, yeah, I think the one thing on this is it just feels very heavy, uh, like points wise. But yeah, I mean Dawnstone alone i think uh is reroll armor saves um and uh it's cheaper so maybe that's maybe that's a better place to go but it's a it's a necklace of blessed teeth at least it's it's very evocative in its uh in its description it's very cool uh this is a grizzly trophy rack 30 points black orc bosses and orc bosses goblin bosses night goblin bosses only all enemy units within six is the bearer suffer minus one to their leadership characteristic to a minimum of two which obviously if you to put this in conjunction with some of the other minuses we saw especially like we've seen uh like just you know, terror from a creature uh, in mm -hmm. addition is really nice. Um, then there's that spell in the uh, the troll magic, which is fun. That's another minus one. So you get a lot of mm -hmm. minuses to leadership, which is good. Yeah. If you again, like, um, if if you if you're thinking you can win combat, debuffing leadership is a good thing. So yeah, and not too bad at thirty points. I don't think it's too bad at thirty points. Yeah. And it affects oh, this, everyone. It affects everyone within range. Uh, to think oh, it wow. yeah. at is twenty five points. The bearer. Um, improves their initiative characters by one. In addition, the wearer in any unit they have joined is not subject to impetuous. Big. 
This one is big, especially if you want to do what I really want to do, which is finding a cool way to, to make use of um, Wolf Riders with their reserve move and their feign flight and put some casters in there and try and go nuke stuff. Um, really, really helpful to not have to worry about Impetuous for one of your units or in Troll Horde where you have the uh, uh, maybe you want your war boss on a, on a big Wyvern. Um, they'd, be, they'd be Impetuous, but you could add this to him and suddenly he's not charging off when you don't want him to just great stuff. That's one of the, I think that's one of the best items in this, in this list for sure, just for helping players, you know, manage impetuous. Yeah. I really like the, the minus one leadership one, but yeah, this is also obviously really brilliant because you build around this item, right? Like that you immediately like, oh, yeah. cool, I'm going to use this to build stuff, which I think is good. Okay. Yeah. Items you've got the staff of Badoom. The bearer of the Staff of Badoom applies plus D3 modifier to the result of any casting roll they make, which is amazing. However, they roll a natural double one or double six when making a casting roll. They center a 5 inch blast template over the bearer. Every model, friend or foe, whose base lies beneath the template, takes a strength 6 8 AP1. The staff is then destroyed. It cannot be used again. Heartbreak. Oops, eight. Uh Staff of Badoom. Uh, I take it every time. It's, it's, it's very good, especially like... Uh... You know, it's definitely somebody thought of on like a Lore of Illusion caster, like if you've got a Night Goblin. Um, but uh, the next one, also, like, again, so many good items for Orcs and Goblins. Like, there are so many takeable things here. Uh, but the next one is just flat out really incredible. The Isle of Gork is 40 points, and the Bearer increases the range of all their spells by three inches. Additionally, once per turn, the Bearer of the Isle of Gork may re-roll a casting roll. This is a second re-roll casting roll item for Orcs and Goblins. Yeah, and it's five extra points. I think uh, the the uh, Nobbly staff in the main book is reroll a casting roll per turn. That means that for a very reasonable amount, you can have two casters rerolling their casting rolls, and then for this caster, an extra three inches. Wow, an extra three inches on Masmic Mirage gets you up to eighteen inches, which is right on the charge range. Like you could literally put your caster out. Like if, if you're doing the magic carpet uh, illusion guy thing, you can put your caster right at the edge of the charge range of a dragon or something that it wants to stop or be in position to stop, and you can feel real comfortable that they're either going to fail that or you can you can run away from it. Um, there's uh, that those those three inches really count, Rob, uh, and uh, and you get to reroll. I think this is another star. Uh, it's just a flat upgrade over the Nobly staff, which was already amazing. So, yeah. Awesome. I think the fact that you can have, you know, that, the Staff of Badoom, and the other item, the Nobly staff, like you say, you could just have some very aggressive casting in a normal Orc and Goblin list, which is yeah. which would be scary. Uh, Orc, Sham through, Orc Shamans get plus one to cast, too, on top of all of that, you know, when they're in a unit uh, of, of more than ten. So, like, there's just so much better, like, they don't have, like, they don't have any, like, all, like, wildly um amazing defense but they got some really really good offense for sure uh dahags brew is orc shamans goblins and night goblins uh, only in addition laws of magic uh, they normally know from the law of the hags brew they may know the spells from the law of troll magic instead oh so as well so if you want to try and bring some troll magic spells into your normal army is what this feels yes, like that's very cool yep. yep without bringing a troll hag yep that's how you do it that's um fun so yeah, Arcane Journal. Well, how do you feel about it? I love it, dude. I think I think that my love for 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 this is transparent and obvious. Um, it's just uh, it's it's a really great book. I think, and the thing is, is that's not to say that the other books weren't good. I think part of it is Homerism here. Like I am, like I just I love Orcs and Goblins. I loved uh, how cool they were in the uh, Arcane Journal when they came out. My biggest critique of, I think, the uh, the Grand Army, sorry, I misspoke there, uh, the, the Grand Army when it came out, my biggest critique, I think, was the fact that Black Orcs and Night Goblins just seem so strong relative to everything else that, like, if we didn't have this, you know, once you got sort of like, okay, I've played with those models, I want to do a different design, you'd kind of have to self-limit your choices. You'd have to, like, say, okay, no Black Orcs or no, no, no Night Goblins. And then you'd still have tons of stuff to play with. But now we've got two extra army lists that um, give you benefits for going outside of those archetypes. Because even the black orcs in the, in the nomad list, they're not the same black orcs that you get uh, access to in the grand army. They're actually quite different. It's not like they gave you black orc boar boys or something. They gave you a very different version of that because they're, they're just go out there and kill things um, um, type units um, 
rather than you know something that's going to help control your army or be a big brick of infantry or whatever. Um, so anyway, I just uh, ten out of ten for me on this arcane journal. I really it really makes me so hopeful. I don't know about you, Rob, but I I can't wait to see what the dwarves do and how that looks. Um, so uh, I'm really excited because I think dwarves are a really great example of right now people are out there grinding trying to find ways to make them um, useful and exciting to play, get them a little more dynamic. Maybe um, that's what we see from an Arcane Journal. I think it's a great book. I think seeing these expansions makes me very hopeful. I think that we could have loads of really fun ways to run loads of different armies. We didn't touch on the Badland Ogres, but I think like eventually we're going to have such a raft of mercenaries to choose from, pick from, have a good time with. So I think it's a really fun time to be an old world player, to be honest. But I thought that already... So uh, agreed, uh, but super quick on that. Actually, I think something that you mentioned earlier, which is just how good monstrous infantry is, some grand armies just don't have access to a lot of monstrous infantry, and especially in the renegade factions. So the Badland Ogres are a really great example of of something that you can, um, you know, they're not crazy powerful. They they got motley crew. There's cool things you can do with them, but it just gives you access to a I think flavorful. I mean, what better mercenary unit is there than a band of ogres um you know so i think that's really great um and mercenaries have their downside of course because they they have to roll on the uh on they have to roll their their mercenary check before every game so they're not crazy over the top um yeah i think i think this this is a home run book i really hope to see that uh you know the first three books have been great i i hope that they keep this uh this level of consistency up because they've been doing a really bang up job yeah, my Ogre Ball's hot tip is just give them great weapons because of initiative two and then just find something in your army that applies always strikes last to the opponent or reduces their initiative down or whatever it might be. And then at their movement six, you can make these boys uh, really move, which I think is spicy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the combo works for giving these guys uh, regen, then additional move. You could make them really fast, potentially. Uh, but yeah, the, I think I think ogres are particularly good at the moment, which is spice, uh, which is fun. Yeah. So I hope everyone. Have uh, you gotten your? Have you have you have you been able to test your ogre list out yet? I guess probably not. You sent that to me in the in the beginning of a very busy stretch for you. So not yet, not yet. I have been running ogres though in Warriors of Chaos, and they're very effective. There. Oh, cool. Uh, which Very is cool. which is where they've translated over to because you could just have more ogres so <laughs> just mm -hmm. just keep getting taking ogres so i think i think the fact that everyone can have ogres now is solid so yeah i hope everyone enjoyed the show thanks very much thanks to val everyone can leave some thanks to him in the chat uh, in the comments sorry and then uh, let's know what you'd like to see in the future of course mm -hmm. thanks to everyone on the square base patreon where the community is getting buzzing about this yes. stuff which is fun uh, it's so been a lot of a lot of fun going on in there. Yeah. So let us know what you'd like to do. Thanks to everyone on Patreon and thanks to everyone for watching the show. Appreciate you and goodbye.